This nice-looking function was from part 1, as was this ellipse. We found the arc length. Recentering won't change that, but it will allow us to integrate this field around that closed path, the work done by the whirlpool. Let's zoom in on the field, negative y, x. Well, the axis here gives y equals 0, so that's no horizontal field component at this axis. And everywhere here, the y component of the field is equal to x. It's really not that bad. Positive means up on the right. Negative means down on the left. Magnitudes are smaller at the center, larger out farther. Now the x direction, same sort of thing with a negative sign thrown in. A whirlpool, an integral, and a dot product. Sounds like a joke, but our goal here is to move along the curve, taking dot products with the field, which is a bit complex. So we'll start out with a simpler shape, an even simpler shape. Everywhere on this side, y equals negative 3 meaning our whirlpool field is 3i. Integrated from negative 3 to 3 is positive 18, positive going with the flow. Next, we'll take part of the red path. Here, x equals negative 3. And we'll say that y equals 3t as we let t move from 0 to 1. That will take y from 0 to 3. This is a technique called line parameterization. It's something we're introducing now because we will need it later. That's the field again, plugging in x and y. This is r prime, the derivative of r, definitely something we have been talking about. At any point x and y, r prime tells you how your position is changing in the i and in the j directions. Here, the derivative of x is 0, because x is constant. The derivative of y is 3dt, because y equals 3t. And I must admit that I don't always remember to write in the dt part. Dot product, integrate, don't forget those. And note the limits. We are integrating t from 0 to 1. Again, not totally necessary. We could have done it the other way, but a useful tool. And we'll be going faster and faster. Another segment here of the path. This time, y is a constant. t goes again from 0 to 1. And x is 3t minus 3. Does that make sense? Well, at t equals 0, x would be negative 3. And then when t goes to 1, x goes to 0. So yeah, x is good. The field is a whirlpool. Here it is in terms of t. This is r prime dot product integral negative 9. Negative? Well, that's right. Displacement is to the right. The field is to the left. The field does negative work. Plenty of symmetry to exploit in this problem. Our first closed integral. A quick review. First was a trip from start to finish, and then a second trip for comparison. Next was a round trip, counterclockwise by convention for the closed integral. And now a more complicated path. The red piece is a line with slope and y-intercept and those good things. Both x and y this time are parameterized as functions of t. The field for now is the same, and so are the steps to the solution. The blue curve is a circle. Its equation looks a little bit different, but switching to radial coordinates, you knew that was coming, that's another form of parameterization. R prime dot product integrate. This time the limits are from negative pi to positive pi over 2. The closed integral is smaller for this new path, which makes sense. The square was bigger, it had a bigger perimeter, and the field is stronger farther from the origin. So an even smaller path should give us an even smaller result, and it does. Now we are really speeding through the details, and we have tweaked the path a couple times. Next, let's tweak the field a football. And that makes this step more complicated. But the dot product still cleans things up nicely, so it's not too bad. On the blue path, there is lack of symmetry that shows up here and gives us a chance to use the double angle formula. Yeah, it's messier for sure, but nothing we can't handle. That's new. 
but these steps are familiar. For a circle, our favorite trig functions clean things up eventually, and even though I didn't need any help with the integration, this website gives us a snapshot of the path, which I think is really neat. It shows us how the dot product is positive here, positive there, negative for just a moment, and then positive at the very end again. And another one. I will try to keep, I'll try my best to keep the commentary to a minimum, except to say that with this function, the closed path integral nearly cancels out. And now for one more. This time we have so many more terms to keep track of, still not too bad. Over here the font is small, I can barely see it, but everything seems to be working out just fine. Wait a minute, they cancel out? Perfectly? Yep. And they will for any path. And if this is surprising to you, that means you've forgotten about conservative functions, those conservative functions from part one. Closed path integrals are always zero. So what do these have in common? What makes them conservative? It might not be obvious, but it is an equation. We're not gonna prove it, we're just moving on because we have unfinished business. And finally, we have all the tools we'll need. The only danger is, with such an elaborate buildup, this final calculation is a bit of a bore, but face it, ellipses can never be boring. And if you're wondering where those limits came from, it's the same method we used in part one there, is your final answer. It checks out, but we're still not quite done, because I promised a special result, a special vector field, starting as we did before, without parameterization. No parameterization here, just a special integral. The proof is not really the point, but you will see it again. And I don't get it. What's so special about this result? Well, you'll see, once you see it again, and again, and again, the same two pi. The same, no matter what path you choose, it's the same 2 pi, no matter what path you choose around that center piece there. This special field is the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Its direction is the whirlpool direction. The magnitude this time is inversely proportional to r, and this result is Ampere's law. The closed integral of that magnetic field over a path is mu naught times the enclosed current. Maybe a similar law, named after Faraday, could help Maxwell see the light.